Hello. <laughs> Welcome to my studio. My name is Patricia Lowe and I have been an artist all my life. Um, the first half of it I painted and sculpted and print made. I'm an etcher and I was um, set to do that for the rest of my life but one day I stayed with some friends who at the end of the weekend showed me how to make a coil pot and I discovered that was the one thing in the world I most wanted to do. So this is one of my big pots. Okay. Um, these are the, I, There are two I have here. They're the only two that um, I have that are not sold or not sold. And this pot is, as you can see, is wild boar. I went into a forest up in Devon and it's a forest where they actually breed wild boar, believe it or not, uh, to eat, sadly. Um, but I went up there to draw the boar because I do everything from life. I, well, if I possibly can, I draw from life before I start, when I know the animal that I want to be working on or that's exciting me at the moment. And I did the drawings with the, with the wild boar who were ranged along on either side of me as I walked through this forest, but with just a tiny little wire probably electric wire, but looking pretty um, pretty dangerous, I have to say. But the great thing was, the minute I took out my drawing pad and began to draw them, they were utterly charming and delightful and posed like mad because pigs love to be drawn. I had very much wanted to do a make a turtle pot because I love tortoiseshell and um, so I thought I've got to do a turtle. I've got to do a turtle pot, definitely. So so there are three turtles on this pot, and uh, I had to take ages. I spent ages uh, making small tests. I do them either on tessellated pieces of clay, or I make tiny thumb pots and I use them as as the tests because I was going to use all oxides for this pot um, to get the right sort of rich organic sort of colours, um, but to make them like tortoiseshell, I had to work that out, how I would do it, so lots of tests. I thought I would do a Caribbean ocean inside, so that's why it's got the sort of turquoises that I've used, the different coppers, and um, that's really what it is. It's, it's pattern, but it's to, it's to represent the, the ocean. This pot actually was adopted by, um, no, I was, I was adopted by the Turtle Society when they saw this pot. Um, sadly, they didn't buy it, but when it was on show at the Fine Arts Society, the gallery I show at, um, they were rather delighted with it, but I think, uh, they, think they couldn't afford it, annoyingly. <laughs> so they made me a, a, a member, of, and they adopted a turtle for me, so I have a, a turtle called Madame Brossard um, that, I have that they have adopted for me. Yes. So the most important thing is that you spend your last penny on all your equipment and your materials if you're an artist, if you've got a penny. And um, I always use the very best quality paints possible. So I use Winsor & Newton on the, the sort of highest level, the most expensive, and they are very expensive. And of course, the very thickest and absolutely best handmade paper to work on. Some of these colours are so lovely and you could buy masses. You have to control yourself because actually you don't need masses. And you're going to be mixing anyway colours. Um, so I do everything, I use these little dishes for mixing both my oxides when I'm painting the pots or my watercolours. I'll take some of these colours and mix the ones that I want to mix um, for whatever I'm doing. So, um, Salisbury Museum has asked me to make an installation in the Wessex Gallery where they have this wonderful case. And I'm so inspired by Bronze Age uh, ceramics and that period and the gold um, that it was a marvellous opportunity and very exciting to do it. And uh, there are limitations because it's only a case and also you can only, you can't walk around the pots. But I had to design it so that it worked on all levels and also showed the different um, 
aspects of my work. So we, we have a series of temporary exhibitions in this gallery, quite small exhibitions, um, and some of them are about local archaeology and some of them are about local artists. So it's a rolling programme, we have about two or three every year, and we've been discussing the idea of an exhibition for a number of years, and then suddenly an opportunity arose to, to, to put it into the slot, so that's why we decided to do it. I think it's really good to use this gallery as a showcase for people who've been inspired by local archaeology. Um, we've had a number of artists who've done small installations here, inspired by things in this space or places that are in this space or represented in the gallery. So it's, it's a really exciting opportunity to really Really give a window into somebody's work and when, when you look at it you might think okay what's it got to do with archaeology but in fact if you look at the form of the pots you look at the decoration on the pots you can see instant connections with the things that are displayed here. I had one lovely commission which was um, Cameron McIntosh had bought a large pot and a badger pot and he then commissioned me to paint his to, to make a pot of his Rhodesian Ridgeback and I said, well, I must come up to London and, and uh, draw the dog. And he said, no, nope, I'll send, send the dog down to you. So this, this huge dog arrived in a Rolls Royce with the dog sitting in the back, chauffeur driven. <laughs> and it was a great moment because I live in the middle of absolutely nowhere and nothing ever happens. And I just hope lots of friends went by and would have seen this wonderful huge dog in the Rolls Royce.